It really nice. It's nice to be in this beautiful facility. I haven't been here in a while, and it's good to be here yes, again. Uh, what we are speaking of today is investing in our young people outside of the fence so they don't come inside the fence. If you've, you have noticed, we have been investing funds every chance that we have gotten in the future of South Carolina, which means investing funds in our young people. That's where the future is. That's the best investment that we can make. And we do it at all levels with every opportunity. But we've asked the legislature for money for childhood education, early childhood education, so that every poor child in South Carolina from a, a poor or low income family, everyone four years old will be able to go to kindergarten, everyone all across the state. Now about half are, are, are eligible. We want 100% and we're making progress with the legislature. They have responded to that request very well. Also, we want to make college, all college, affordable and accessible to low-income people across the state through tuition grants and needs-based scholarships under the Pell Grant formula and we're doing that and we expect to have progress as well there. Everything that we are doing is based on our knowledge that South Carolina must maintain and enhance its competitive edge as we go into particularly the next 10 years. The Southeast is where the great investment and growth is happening. And we know from talking to and responding to and feeling the investment of big companies from around the world, they want to come to South Carolina because of the people of South Carolina. That's the main reason. Well, if we're going to take advantage of that, I guess you would call it a major world trend at this point of the United States being the place of opportunity, particularly the southeastern United States and we have to our people have to be ready and you have to start early so this is an investment today that as I have said will we investing our young people outside of the fence in order to keep them from coming inside of the fence we have this is a gears act this will be the last of the governor's emergency education relief funds that we got in the cares act and it is $4.8 million for community-based and evidence-based therapeutic programming to address the needs of youth and their families. A lot of our young people, through no fault of their own, are in situations where they need guidance and need some help. And we are going to offer that. That's the best, best investment that we can make. We're also directing through the Department of Juvenile Justice, all of this goes through the Department of Juvenile Justice to areas of the state selected by the Department of Juvenile Justice based on data accumulated by the Department of Juvenile Justice to where it can do the most good. And there'll be private contractors and others that will be implementing these programs under the umbrella of the Department of Juvenile Justice. Four, point, uh, four, four million dollars for the South Carolina After School Alliance, which will collaborate with DJJ to provide summer and after school programs, and especially in the rural areas where the at-risk at middle school students reside. Also, $2.2 million for full-time mentoring programs to support youth in their education and life skill developments. The areas targeted there are Greenville, North Charleston, Anderson, Rock Hill, Charleston, Columbia, and Spartanburg. And also, finally, $1.25 million for team after-school centers which support at-risk high school students. These centers are typically based in local churches, community centers, and other public buildings. And, they will, and also, DJJ will provide GED testing to youth through these centers. So this is, we think this is a great chance. It's coming at the right time for our state, and we know that our future rests with our young people. And this will help our young people in their education, in the in the become a strong part and a, a viable part of, of 
the workforce in South Carolina, which helps everyone in South Carolina and helps take South Carolina to the top. Director Pugh. Yes, sir. Thank you again, Governor. As you heard the governor say, we're going to use these uh, funds, this gracious allocation that has been afforded to us. We're going to use this to meet young people where they are. You know, our goal is to uh, take this opportunity and provide prevention and intervention services that will allow us the opportunity to meet uh, our young people in the community, to keep them safe and keep them out there instead of coming here. That's our goal. Uh, DJJ, uh, we understand, and as many of you understand, that as adults, um, the phase of youth development that we all encountered and those of us that are parents, we recognize how different it is now for young people. So our goal as an agency has been, and with the enhancements of our program offerings, we will continue to be empowering our young people for the future. Through these partnerships, our ultimate goal is to continue to empower young people, but also to serve families. We at the department believe that it's one thing to impact the child, but we want to get into these homes and help the families. So one of the ways that we're going to do that is through multi-systemic therapy. Multi-systemic therapy will serve our high-risk youth. It's an evidence-based delinquency program for young people that empowers them and their families. This is a treatment model that is designed to serve young people in their homes. And it's for young people ages 12 to 18. MST reduces juvenile delinquency and antisocial behavior by addressing the core cause of such conduct and views the client as a network of systems. We look at their school, we look at their family, we look at their peers and their neighborhood. And so the primary goal of MST's juvenile delinquency prevention program include reducing youth criminal activity, reducing other types of antisocial behavior such as drug abuse, achieving these outcomes at a cost savings by decreasing rates of incarceration and out of home placement. It's much cheaper to serve young people in the community than it is to serve them in secure confinement. And so also we wanna pair with this what's called family functional therapy, FFT. Family functional therapy is also an evidence-based model that has received international recognition for its outcomes in helping troubled youth and their families to overcome delinquency, substance abuse, and violence. FFT helps to save families uh, while at the same time preventing crime and victimization in community. Both FFT and, M F excuse me, both FFT and MST are proven intervention and prevention treatment models that we're excited about having access to. Success rates of these programs are measured by rates of rearrest and out-of-home placement. They've shown uh, reductions of 30% or more, thereby improving public safety, reducing crime and violence, and improving outcomes for youth success. After continuous use of these programs, we estimate a reduction between 50 and 75% of the cost associated with committing juveniles to the Department of Juvenile Justice. We'll also use a favorable portion of this money to enhance our current intervention and prevention programs. You heard the, go the governor speak about meeting, uh, co co huh, let me get this out. You heard the governor talk about collaboration. And so we want to collaborate with some partners and we're gonna uh, use our task sites and we're gonna offer opportunities for young people who may be on the cusp of making a poor decision because of the pandemic. We're gonna try to help them get their GED. We're gonna to try to help them get employment skills. We're gonna to try to help them become gainfully employed because again, we wanna help them out there so they don't come here. Along with all that, we're gonna partner with some great folks. We're gonna partner with Zelda Weimer, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the South Carolina After School Alliance. We're also gonna partner with uh, James Gallion, Chief Executive Officer of Ice Claven Development Group who'll also uh, help us with our mentoring programs. I tell my staff all the time, here at DJJ, we have the ability to impact this state for the next 40 or 50 years. And oftentimes people say, well, how is that possible? Because we're serving South Carolina's troubled youth. If we're able to take these young people and make them productive, if we're able to give them the tools to be successful, when they leave here, when they go back to these communities, because they're going back, when they become mothers, when they become fathers, hopefully something we will have implemented into their lives will help them become productive citizens and become assets to South Carolina and not burdens. So Governor, we thank you again for this opportunity. We'll now hear from Ms. Waymeyer and then Mr. Gallian. Thank you, Director Pugh. Yes, 
Good morning, I'm Zelda Weimer, President of the South Carolina After School Alliance. Joining me today, Sam Johnson, Board Chair, Carrie Abel, Board Secretary, Roscoe Wilson, Community Liaison, Jim Headley, Head of Parks and Recs, and I will introduce a couple of special partners later with a special <laughs> announcement. And I'm going to follow Governor McMaster. You always, when you bring your wife to any event, you always introduce her as your bride. So I'm going to introduce my husband as my groom, Tony um, Waymer. <laughs> He's with me today. Governor McMaster, thank you very much for investing and trusting in the community to help reconnect and re-engage students in those hard to reach underserved areas through summer programs. We are excited about strengthening our partnership with Dr. Pugh and the Department of Juvenile Justice. DJJ has worked with the Alliance on preventing young people from entering the system for years, and we're looking forward to continuing this work. Since 2002, the South Carolina After School Alliance has championed the work of after school and summer programs, starting with a small group of 300 groups to a growing network of 1,486 programs operating during the summertime and after the bell rings during the school year, impacting over 100,000 students across the state. That's more students than the largest school district in South Carolina. With the sudden emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, families were dealt a significant blow, as Governor McMaster mentioned, as schools grappled with the massive and uncharted task of bringing our students back into school buildings safely and prepared for an uncertain year, we knew the need of summer programs would be great. More support for additional staff, resources, and space to help students catch up, re-engage, and recover for the learning loss and social isolation. Locally, we witnessed families struggling. Moms and dads were not able to return to work because their children were still at home. Grandparents raising their grandchildren were not able to transition and have an understanding of online learning and were not able to follow their child's learning progress. With the help of the governor's investment, 100 summer, summer programs will be able to open their doors. And through evidence-based practices, programs will be able to offer academic support, STEM innovation, entrepreneurship education, college and career readiness, the arts to accelerate learning and cultivate social and emotional skills needed to get back on track. Through a project-based instruction, students will engage in a, an array of activities in research and have opportunity to demonstrate mastery of teamwork, problem solving, creativity, work ethic, and other skills, and competencies connected to the profile of a South Carolina graduate. In addition to the governor's investment, Students will receive additional support through a special partnership between the South Carolina After School Alliance and the University of South Carolina. Through the University's Beyond the Classroom program, approximately 8,000 college students from across eight of their campuses, all eight of their campuses, will have an opportunity to volunteer as mentors, and instructors in local summer and after school programs and receive credit hours for their civic engagement. University representatives Bill Kirkland and Latanzi Duncan have joined us today showing their commitment and dedication to the communities and families of South Carolina. So thank you very much for the commitment. We're excited about the positive impact college students will have on our younger students. Students participating in these programs will have a greater connection to caring adults, greater support academically, and greater possibilities to succeed in life. This investment is a tremendous gain, but there is much work yet to be done with our students this summer. Interfaith groups, 
other community groups and parks and recreational centers will be serving students this summer. Let's make sure they are equipped to do so as well. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm James Gallion. I'm here on behalf of uh, a network of uh, profit, for-profit and non-profit companies that will be serving uh, tomorrow's kids uh, today uh, and we, tomorrow's leaders today. And we hope that uh, um, we're very successful in that effort because we have a lot uh, of problems from the pandemic. And I, first, I just want to thank uh, Governor McMaster and Director Pugh for having the vision and the commitment to deal with this problem. Um, a lot of uh, folks would see a problem, a generational problem like this, and would decide to kick the can down the road, and that's not what they've done. They decided to, to take it head on, and they're to be lauded for that. Um, because a lot of these kids have lost something very precious to them. It's contact with a, an influential teacher or a, a trusted coach that they can go to for guidance. Um, and that loss is incredibly important for some kids because for some kids, their greatest need is not really an education. It's someone to show them how important education is and then to be present in their life long enough to make sure that they get it. And so um, at, at, with our efforts, what we plan on doing is we try to meet that greatest need by pairing them with full-time mentors. And what that will allow us to do is that full-time mentor will be there to impart not only the educational importance, but the, the life skills, the soft skills that allow us to be successful in our society today and that some of these kids that have borne the brunt of the pandemic, they don't have access to those things anymore. And um, as a former federal prosecutor, like the governor, we've seen where kids who get off track at a, at a vulnerable time in their lives can end up, and that's not a good place. It's a tragedy indeed. So um, we look forward to doing that. We look forward to bringing back best practices to the state that the state can use in the educational structure and, and other organizations. Um, and we look forward to doing that over the next couple of years with this award and we're very thankful. And again, we just want to thank the governor and the director for their vision and their commitment and uh, we look forward to working for you. Thank you. So at this time, we'll entertain any questions uh, as it relates to uh, the gear funds. Sure. So some of the things that we looked at are where are most of our referrals coming from? What type of referrals are we getting? And so we were able to identify that a lot of our young people that are coming to us are coming for nonviolent offenses. And so we took this as an opportunity to not only meet those young people in the community and serve them, but also to get some quantitative data to show that we can get better results by serving young people in the community than opposed to serving them in a secure environment. We also took this opportunity to look at the uh, needs that the young people may need because of, again, not having that interaction uh, over the past year because of the pandemic. So we knew a lot of mentoring was going to be needed. But we also spoke with our workforce and job readiness team, and we talked about those group of juniors and seniors that may fall behind because of this pandemic. And so our fear was is that they would become frustrated, may become delinquent because of their frustration may return back to school and become disruptive or again delinquent or deemed delinquent out of their frustration. We didn't want that for those young people. So what we're trying to do is partner in the community and for that young person that may say, hey, I'm ready to go into the workforce. We want to give them the opportunity to get an education credential. We want to get them employed. We want to get them on the right track so they don't, again, come behind the fence. So we looked at those needs. We also took into consideration that there's going to be a number of young people that are latchkey kids. We looked at the population as to that time of uh, parents not home yet, but the child is home from school. There is a lot of time in there for delinquent activity. So this is a great opportunity to get those young people in a secure place where we can mentor them, we can work with them and give them the skills to manage the, I guess, effects of the pandemic. And so we just kind of looked at a broad uh, stroke of how we could help youth that are not necessarily justice involved youth, but how to help them not to become justice involved youth. I do, I do. It costs about $500 a day to serve a young person in secure confinement. 
MST and FST is about $125 a day. It will be a huge savings to the state. And so our goal, our goal is to be able to go to the governor this time next year and say, here's the data, it worked. And hopefully we can then make this recurring funds and continue this practice in this state. You know, we have continued to try to make improvements at DJJ since being given the opportunity to come here to serve as the director. A number of the items mentioned in the LAC report we've been working on. There's some new items that are mentioned that we're going to embrace and continue to work on. But what these funds, these funds are going to help us serve youth of South Carolina as a whole. Well, we, I have uh, full confidence in Director Pugh. Uh, as we know across the country, this is a this is a challenging effort, uh, very challenging. Uh, the the and the, the answer, the ultimate answer, is to keep the young people from getting off the right track. It is mighty easy today for a young person. Uh, particularly with the effects of the, the virus and, and all the ramifications there. It, it was easy to get all on the wrong track before, and it's even easier now. And it's hard to get back on the right track. So what this effort does is goes as far as we can get to the root of it, and that is to keep the, keep the young people to identify and, and help and guide and mentor those young people to keep them on the right track. Now, for the big picture, it, we know it's, it's education, it is uh, the economy that we have to have. If, if a family is working, doing work that they like, producing an income, that adds to stability. And that, in the end, is the answer. And we're doing all we can to provide that sort of growth in South Carolina, as, as you know from earlier things we've been doing for years in South Carolina. But this goes, this is a, a, a little, it's a different approach and recognizes, recognizes that we want to keep, we want to invest in the young people outside the fence to keep them from coming inside the fence. And it is, it's the right approach. And we are confident it's going to have re good results. Governor, yes, sir. Yes. I think it's an excellent way. I think it. it I, I'm excited, in in, test, in anticipation of the results that we're going to see yes, from this, because we have confidence in those who are involved. And one one note there is that is is special is the collaboration, communication, and cooperation with the University of South Carolina which has about 50,000 students statewide, uh, eight, eight campuses, and they are going to participate in mentoring. And that is, uh, that is, that's good for them, it's good for the taxpayer, and it's good for the young people. Those are the kind of things where we combine assets and new ideas uh, that, where we can really make progress. So this is, this is a big step today. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dismiss. Again, thank you all for coming. Um, we appreciate it and we look forward to uh, any questions that you may have in the future. Thank you.